What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. CC over here and today I have some very exciting news to share with you regarding Litecoin. But of course, as usual, I do have also some other news that I would like to share with you to keep you up to date into the crypto world. So let's dive right into it. The first news that we have, China. Now, as you all know, China has banned Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies for about a million times. And every time is the same story. But this is something different. China-based businesses show signs of re-entry into the crypto market. Hmm. That's very interesting. Well, let's dive a little bit further. Data analytic firm believes there are signs that China is returning to the crypto market, according to data analytic firm CryptoQuant. It seems to be that there is a lot more interest in cryptocurrencies lately. Paul Chan, Hong Kong's financial secretary, said that the city remains committed to becoming a regional crypto hub and will work to attract new businesses worldwide. Now, last month, Hong Kong stock exchange asset manager CSOP raised nearly $79 million during its debut Bitcoin and Ethereum futures exchange traded funds. Very, very interesting. Let's see how this plays out. Proposed bill in Argentina encourages citizens to reveal crypto holdings. My Argentinian friends, think twice what you want to do. So Argentina's Ministry of Economy has drafted a bill to encourage Argentines to declare their cryptocurrency holdings. Okay, now, of course, he has some kind of incentive and his incentive is to give them discounted tax rates. So aimed at combating money laundering, the externalizations of Argentine savings draft law was introduced by economy minister Sergio Massa. The bill would require crypto holders to produce an affidavit or a sworn statement identifying the whereabouts of their holdings to the government. The bill proposes tax incentives to encourage citizens to declare their holding. Those who volunteer voluntarily declare the holdings within 90 days of the law coming into force would pay just two and a half percent tax on the capital gains of the crypto holdings. But this tax rate would increase incrementally every 90 days until it reaches 15%, the country's standard capital gains tax rate. Okay, look at these three guys. They're laughing. They think they did a great job, but I don't know, guys. I mean, that's up to you to decide. All I can tell you is if you're a citizen of Argentina, think twice what you want to do, because this is not just for the crypto holdings. Of course, this is also for other asset classes, such as we can see here, fiat currency, share stocks, uh, real estate, and even furniture. Okay, that's weird. Let's move on. Binance US cleared to buy crypto lender Voyager out of bankruptcy. Now, as you all heard, crypto lender Voyager is imminently going to be bankrupt. And it seems that Binance US have the green light now to acquire the crypto lender Voyager. Voyager was initially agreed to sell itself to FTX, but reopened its bidding processes after Sam Bankman Friedman exchange collapsed in November. Binance US swooped in with the winning offer in December. December. Good luck to Binance. It seems to be that they're only growing at the moment. Good for them. Seems to be that doing a good job. As far as I'm concerned, it is the only crypto exchange at the moment that I currently trust. But again, I do not trust blindly and I do not leave most of my coins there. Most of my coins are stored in a ledger. If you're interested, guys, to get yourself a hardware ledger, which is the safest way to store your cryptocurrencies, there's a link down below. With my link, you actually get also $10 of cryptocurrency for free. Moving on, Crypto.com delists Tether's USDT stablecoin for Canadian users. This is huge, guys. USDT is valued at $66 billion. It is the most popular stablecoin out there at the moment. And Crypto.com is also the world's top exchanges by volume, and they will delist Tether dollar linked stablecoin USDT by January 31st. So any cryptocurrency pair that has a USDT next to it will be delisted as well. This is going on because of all the scrutiny that is going on, of course, with FTX and more stricter regulations going on. And it seems to be that Crypto.com does want to follow the regulations. And I think this is what is going on at the moment. But again, this is just for Canadian users. Coinbase slashes 20% of staff in the third round of layoff. This is the third time Coinbase has announced that they're slashing their staff members and this time 
decline by 20%. This is not looking good, guys. You're talking about now 950 employees being let go. That is very sad. We are in a bear market, but I would like to highlight here that this is not only affecting cryptocurrency industry. Now we'll talk about that in a moment. So the largest US crypto exchange, Coinbase, announced its third round of layoff as it slashes 20% of its workforce this time in its latest block. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong announced that the firm is letting go of around 950 employees. On top of that, Coinbase will close projects that have a lower probability of success. The official statement also reveals that Coinbase might incur nearly $149 million to $163 million in restructuring expenses, which is expected to be completed by the end of Q2. This is sad, guys, but like I said, this is not happening just in the crypto industry, and I will show you more information about that, that this is happening globally all around the world. Now, Ethereum software firm consensus to cut upwards of 100 staff members. Now, if you don't know consensus, guys, it is a developer of the crypto wallet MetaMask and they're planning to lay off 100 staffers or more. Consensus, guys, they currently have about 900 employees and they're letting go 100. That's nearly 10%. Now, on top of that, Coindesk estimates nearly 27,000 jobs have been lost across the crypto industry since April based on media reports and press releases. 27,000 jobs, guys, this is huge. But let me show you something that is more interesting. Now, just to show you that it's not just the cryptocurrency industry that is being affected. Let's go back to 2022. March 9th, Better.com has actually laid off 3,100 staff. Now, following on from 900 staff fired already in December of 2021 over a Zoom call. This is, this is ridiculous. They've laid off another 3,100. Now, if you move on, April 26, Robin Hood, CEO, stated that the company company had cut 9% of its company staff amounting to around 300 people. Netflix, they have laid off 150 staff members. That's April 28th. May 5th, Cameo has laid off from 100 to nearly 400 members. Carvana had a rocky 2022 with $506 million losses in the first quarter. They've laid off 2,500 members. Klarna, 750 members, which represents 10% of their staff. Netflix lays off another 300 members in June. June 24th because of the drop in subscribers. June 28th, we have Tesla laying off 229 members, which is roughly around 10%. Twitter, guys, 100 people. Microsoft, around 1,800 members. TikTok, 100. Vimeo, 6% of their company's workforce. Shopify, 1,000 members, which is about 10% of the company. Robinhood, round number two, 700 members, which is around 23% of its staff. iRobot, 100. 140, Groupon 500, Microsoft 200, Linktree, 2Pill, Calm. I think you're getting the whole idea, guys. HBO Max 70, Apple 100, Meta 60, Snap 1200, Patreon 150. Guys, this is happening globally. Ericsson 400, DocuSign 650, Spotify another 40, Intel potentially 1000, Microsoft a thousand again twitter lays off 3700 staff members guys that is an insane amount meta 11,000. I'm sure you've heard of Meta, also called as Facebook, has laid laid off 11,000 people. You're talking about 10%. Amazon, 10,000 staff members. Wow. Cisco, 4,000 staff members. HP, 4,000 to 6,000 staff members. Adobe, 100. <laughs> Amazon, 18,000 staff members as of 5th of January, 2023. Guys, this is crazy. This is just to show you this is not just affecting the crypto industry. And now you might be wondering, okay, what the hell is going on? Why is all these companies, crypto companies also laying off all these people? Well, I think it comes down also to the inflation. Now here I'm showing you the inflation rate in the United States for the past 10 years. The US target of inflation is around 2%. And what we can see for the past two years, guys, the inflation rate in the United States has skyrocketed to 
to over 7%. On top of that, it's not just the USA that has actually seen skyrocketed inflation. I'm just going to choose the G20 countries here just to give you some information of what is going on with inflation around the world. And as you can see, every different country has a different inflation rate. I'm going to give you some examples. Let's look at Italy. Right now, it's at 11.6%. So if I open Italy up and I go to 25 years, what do you guys see? Now, from 2000 to 2022, you can clearly see how the trend is moving. 2008, the peak of 2008, that where the big financial crisis happened, we can see that inflation peaked just at over 4% and that was a big, huge deal. But look at this, guys. We're nearly 12% of inflation just in Italy. Let's look at more countries here. Let's look at the United Kingdom. United Kingdom, again, since 2020, 2022, you can see the range. 2008 financial crisis, it peaked just under 6%. At the moment, it's over 10%. You're talking about nearly doubling the previous inflation rate. Netherlands at 9.6, very, very similar. Inflation was roughly peaked at 4% here in 2002. My guess is 2008 was also where the financial crisis happened all around the world, just under 4%. But look at this now. Germany, it's at 8.6%. What is going on with Germany? Again, same thing. Inflation is roughly averaging around 2%. It peaked just under 4% in 2008. But look at it now. We had it and we reached over 10%. Now, what does this mean and it's not just these countries guys let's look at spain as well averaging around three percent i would say since 2000 and again we have reached over 10 percent in 2022 guys this is this is going all around the world inflation is a big deal now if, for those of you who don't know what is inflation what does it mean long-lasting episodes of high inflation are often the result of lax monetary policy if the money supply grows too big relative to the size of the economy the unit value of the currency diminishes in other words, this purchasing power falls and prices rise. So what does it mean, guys? Well, if you were buying, let's say, a loaf of bread for $1 three years ago, today, that loaf of bread may cost you $3. Now, the best part here, the icing on the cake is that, yes, things are becoming more expensive, but salaries are remaining the same. And because things are becoming more expensive, that is also leads to to why many companies are laying off staff because things are becoming more expensive for them. But on top of that, people don't have the money to buy as they used to maybe two or three years ago. And that is why when there is no business, companies have to actually end up laying off staff. I actually think that Bitcoin plays a significant role into solving these kind of issues, but that's just my opinion. Let's look at Bitcoin's performance, what is going on at the moment. If you remember guys, yesterday I showed you that this range here, 17.2, 17.3 was a resistance, but we can clearly see the price broke out this resistance and now turned it into a support. So right now this is a support guys we can clearly see that and the next target or the next resistance it's around seventeen thousand five hundred dollars we'll have to wait and see of course if this does not break this resistance we might see the price coming back here to test support one and as you can see here we have support one support two and support three now the reason why i colored these greens and i colored this red is because usually when the price hits a resistance the price may actually bounce back now if the price hits a support a good buying opportunity or a selling opportunity at the resistance litecoin guys this is the moment that i wanted to talk to you about litecoin may rally post halving this historic on-chain data shows litecoin's next halving is projected to take place in august this year with a handful of analysts already looking forward to what the impact might be on the coin now halving is an event peculiar to proof of work the same just like we have in Bitcoin. Now, at the moment, the current reward per block from mining Litecoin is pegged at 12.5 Litecoins, which means that this is the reward that the miners are getting. However, in August, once the halving occurs, this is going to be slashed in half. So you're talking about the reward becoming at 6.25. As observed by Rect Capital, Litecoin's price bottomed for about 122 days before the first halving and rallied 822% afterwards. A similar pattern was observed before the second halving in which the coin first bottomed out at 243 days and rallied 550 
percent afterwards post halving rally imminent while these observable rallies pre halving are impressive so what he's trying to say is that there's always rallies before the halving then we might see kind of capitulation and then bull market and i will show you what do i mean by that the cryptocurrency soared 14,200 percent after the first halving while the jump following the second halving was pegged at 1,574 percent Take a look at this, guys. So Litecoin's next halving is going to happen 189 days or 19 of July 2023. Now, here we have the Litecoin chart. Now, what I wanted to show you, first of all, is that here we see that Litecoin is already down 90% from its all-time highs, which is around $411. At the moment, guys, Lightning is at $82. But what I wanted to show you, this point right here so if i count here 189 days then it's showing me that the halving should occur around mid of july so we have the halving of litecoin and the halving of bitcoin 189 days left for the litecoin halving now take a look at this litecoin pre-halving fractal hints at 200 percent price rally by 2023 so they're expecting a 200 percent increase before the halving let's go back and do a 200 percent increase so if i take the bottom which is here and i go 200 percent you're looking at around 122 dollars so it is expected that this should be reached before the halving. Now, Litecoin has undergone two halvings since its launch in October 2011. The first one in 2015, which reduced its block reward from 50 to 25 Litecoins, and the second one in 2019, which slashed its 25 Litecoins to 12.5. Now, this is also something interesting that I wanted to share with you here. We can clearly see the bottom of Litecoin here, and then we have a local top the halving occurs here as you can see this orange line here then we can see kind of capitulation and then boom bull market but i think this one right here it's also the effect of the bitcoin halving and of course the bull market in general now it seems that the same thing happened also here as well bottom halving capitulation and then bull market 2021 2022 we had the bull market now if history is going to repeat itself it should look at something like this bottom local top halving capitulation ranging and then boom bull market now so as we can see here if history is going to repeat itself we're looking at litecoin reaching nearly a thousand dollars this could happen of course as we can see here somewhere between 2025 and 2026 if history is going to repeat itself so this is what i had for you guys today is litecoin going to reach a thousand dollars i guess we're just going to have to wait and see tell me guys what you think where litecoin is headed leave a comment down below and i'll see you on the next one thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed it consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this smash the like button and leave a comment down below feel free to follow me on twitter and i'll see you on the next one cc is out